So if people are in this phase of, you know, I'm either in a job, but I'm thinking I might want to try freelancing or trying some self-employment, or if yeah. they are self-employed, but they're feeling like, oh, I, I can't make that leap to the next level because I don't have enough clients. What are your recommendations for getting those first or next clients, especially for people who want to spend less time on social media, which is what we're talking about here. You know, this isn't just like go on Facebook and post. I think yeah. the approach that you typically take and recommend is much more proactive active outreach. So can we talk about that? Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge believer that, um, it's a much easier to build a business one conversation at a time. And mm. it's more about building relationships that themselves <laughs> don't necessarily turn into clients, but the more conversations you can have with people and, and authentic conversations where you can show up with the main expectation is that hopefully you'll have a couple of minutes to practice talking about what you do. Mm -hmm. Like if that's all that happened and you had a half an hour or an hour meeting and you got the opportunity to engage with somebody that you thought was interesting, maybe even a little cool, whatever your definition of cool is, <laughs> like I think Meg is cool. Like I can hang out with you for an hour and I'll enjoy the conversation. I don't need to get anything from you in return, right? Yeah. I don't need to leave with a new client. I don't need to leave with you paying me money for something. You're a business owner. I'm a business owner. And we're having a conversation that can include personal type of topics. Maybe we have hobbies like we talked about earlier. <laughs> Maybe we collaborate and talk about, you know, the pains of, of child rearing or <laughs> you know, the, the pros or whatever. And uh, hopefully during this time, we can talk about what we're both working on professionally. Yeah. And maybe there's a way that we can give each other feedback or make an introduction to somebody else or who knows. But if you think about prospecting is just getting to know more people, having more conversations, it takes a lot of the pressure off. Yes. And then when you do find somebody that is a good fit for it, then you already have that existing relationship or, and if they're not, then asking for a referral is okay mm -hmm. too. I know like my final job, I was working with somebody who, uh, it was at an architecture firm. So it was like a junior designer there and okay. his college roommate was becoming a doctor and setting up a practice. And so I was like, okay, let's let me talk to him about how I can help him with his marketing. You know, it didn't have to be, you know, this guy introduces me to this guy and I have to turn it into a client immediately. But then once I got to know that type of, he was a naturopathic doctor, then I started going out and trying to find more naturopathic doctors. Cause I'd done the work to learn what the heck a naturopathic doctor was yeah. and how to design for a website. And what are the rules around what you can and can't say? So the next time someone came across my path, I was like, oh yeah, I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I could go out and find others or ask that person for more referrals. I didn't have to go post everywhere and, you know, go to job board. I mean, job boards are okay too, but I didn't have to, to feel like I was just promoting myself anywhere. I was just tapping into relationships that already right. existed and then asking for introductions to other people to see what they needed. But there wasn't like any, you didn't feel squeamy about that, right? No. Like, like you didn't feel like you were selling something that wasn't necessary. I think that's where the problem lies is that there's mm. a fair amount of people that have maybe tried like an MLM, a multi-level marketing kind of thing, selling leggings or kids books or whatever the case may be. And I don't think there's anything bad about those businesses or even their business models. What I think ends up being hard for some people is that um, they're not getting in front of enough people that really like need the product, right? Yeah. So instead they're having friends host a party and their friends are inviting other friends and they're making it like a social event. And then sometimes there's like an awkward pitch <laughs> about things that you don't really need to buy, but you kind of feel guilty because you showed up to the party. So then you have to spend the money that right. you wouldn't want to direct in that way. And so I think that's where like there's a not a fit between the need and the audience. And yes. instead you need to like, if you're offering services, figure out why is that valuable? Go back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, and then who would benefit from those services. And I know that feels like a really hard question when you're first starting out, but one of the ways that you can find the answer is just having conversations. Yes. You know, and I think the word pitch has almost gotten a bad rap because we think about those, you know, I'm at this Tupperware party and somebody's going to tell me that I have to buy this spatula or I went to a timeshare and got a free lunch and now they're going to pitch me for an hour and tell me about it. But a pitch doesn't have to be a cold, you know, scripted thing. It can be, Hey, it know, be because Su Susie told me that. Yeah. 
you know, Susie told me that you need a website. Do you want to get on a conversation? You know, it doesn't always have to be a, a big formal PowerPoint, whatever it can be, you know, Hey, I heard, or yep. after our conversation, I wanted to follow up with you and let you know that if you want to hire somebody to write blog posts for you, I'd love to have, you know, I'd love to talk about that with you. You know, it, it can be informal while still being valuable.